Rio Trevathan, Ben Reagan, and Nico Del, Va Del Valle. I'm going to check make sure I said that one right. Apologies there, Nico, if we didn't. On the left, Anderson Brondoon and Brad Nelson on the right. You said that one wrong. Bradley Nelson. Brian Brown and Dewey. Brown. I said Dewey and wrong on purpose. Dewey. But Brown is correct. It's Ben, turn one, Faithless, looting, discards, Bloodgast, and another land. So, Ryan, in the main deck, if Brian sticks an ensnaring bridge, can Ben answer it? Uh, it does not appear to be the case. Uh, theoretically, if Brian lands that bridge at two life, Ben can cast a collective brutality. Inquisition of Kozlak, turn one from Brian. C is Faithless, looting, burning inquiry, lightning bolt, and two more lands. So depending how Brian feels about his hand, this choice is between <laughs> burning, burning inquiry and inquiry. faithless looting. He takes, ooh, I like this. He takes faithless looting. That means we might see a burning inquiry. You don't know, I love watching people resolve this card. I never want to cast it myself, <laughs> but I, I like seeing it happen. It's so miserable. Here's blood gas from Ben out of the graveyard, and goblin lore was his draw for the turn. That is a really nice pickup. The thing about casting Burning Inquiry is on the resolution. You draw three, discard three. You're down a card because you cast a spell. Yeah. The Goblin Lore, you're at least draw even four, on cards. discard three. But you had to pay an extra mana for it. That, that is, in fact, the case. It's one card deeper to and, possibly find some hollow ones. And you can't get all your opponent's lands. Discards. Looks like the Burning Inquiry went away along with a land and a Flame Blade Adept. So that he'll cycle a Street Wraith. You know, once Brian inquisitions you and lets you have the Burning uh -huh. Inquiry over the Faithless Looting, you do get the idea that maybe Brian wants you to cast the Inquiry. Cycles another Street Wraith, but then just says go. For Brian, draws Ancient Stirrings. He has Whir of Invention in hand as well, so you have to think that that Ensnaring Bridge is not far off. Yeah, it won't take too long. All right, Brian will cast the Ancient Stirrings, see if he can find a bridge, see a spell bomb. It looks like a bridge there. Does he want it? I imagine he does. And the Burning Inquiry was pitched to the Goblin lore. BBD so. is not concerned about that copy anymore. <laughs> yeah, it takes Ensnaring Bridge. You mean there's that, the answer in Ensnaring Bridge is Ben just casts a Burning Inquiry and hopes Brian discards it? Yeah, an Inquiry and a Dream. Lantern of Insight for Brian. Top cards, Ancient Stirrings and a Lightning Bolt. No yep. Metalcraft yet for Brian, so he is out of plays. Ben can get some chip shots in. He has a little bit of reach in the deck. There's those four lightning bolts. We talked about two collective brutalities yeah. early, but that is a very small number. Once Brian starts getting some code, uh, codex shredders online, things like that. Three mana flashes back faithless looting for Ben. Draws lightning bolt. Another one in that blood gas. So that's three lightning bolts now? That's a lot of bolts. Discards blood gas and land. Top card is a burning inquiry. Uh-oh. Better get that bridge out. Swings. I mean, Bren's hand right now, I believe, is just three lightning bolts. Since he passes back to Brian. Mm -hmm. Kind of the issue, though, is that Ben just getting in these chip shots for two. Yeah. That's not enough to put Brian in lightning bolt range. Ancient stirrings from Brian goes to 15. I believe he's looking for a third land mostly off of this one. Well, he's not going to find it. He does find some Mishra's Bauble. That's pretty similar. It turns the Mox Opal on, and that's another mana source. It costs zero, so he gets to empty some things from his hand this turn. Yeah, it means he does have the mana for Ensnaring Bridge this turn if he wants. He'll cast Mishra's Bauble. But it looks like not. Ancient Stirrings will find that Dark Slick Shores on top. And so that, that still gives Brian the mana. He's just emptying his hand. Right. And this is really nicely sequenced. Let's see, does Brian have the main deck Witchbane Orb or something just totally shut this off? He does he have does. main deck Orb. Yep. So the bridge in his hand, the Whir can find Witchbane Orbs. Brian makes Codex Shredder. I like everything that's going on here. Mm -hmm. Stands to take a couple more points of damage this turn, but uh, Brian's still at 15. That Blood Gas discarded next turn, that won't do any additional damage. If oh. Regan wants to turn that Flame Wake Phoenix in the graveyard online, he's going to have to get Ferocious now. Oh, Ryan, and both our Grixis mirrors on the other tables. <laughs> I know, we have four Grixis decks. Wow. Uh, ben Reagan's teammates helping him out here, though. Uh, Rio Trevathan and, and Nico both taking game one. Yeah, and Rio winning game one in a legacy mirror against Todd Anderson. Fair enough. That is impressive. Draw for Ben is Burning Inquiry. The problem is he has all these Lightning Bolts. So he either can cast them or inquiry them away. 
You don't want to empty your hand and then draw play Burning Inquiry. That doesn't do anything. This is just one of those matchups where you almost need turn one Flame Blade Adept. Yeah. You have to be hitting hard and fast. Or, yeah. Ben's just hitting slow and soft. Or <laughs> hollow ones. Yeah, you yeah. need those big turn one plays. Right. Just not doing enough on these early turns. And Brian's going to start setting up bridge, and that's All going right. to be it. This is like fourth men in a row we've covered, Brad, hollow one. I, I, these, these mythical turn ones where you do something, I just... I ha as far as I'm aware, this is a Bloodgast aggro deck. I have receipts. I have some moto photos of me you doing busted stuff. You can doctor those. The I issue don't... is that you also have receipts to the contrary. <laughs> and these ones I've seen happen. I, this one's I, happening I right this now. this last open, and I got a bunch of pictures of people's moto screenshots. I'm like, look, Photoshop's a thing, okay? Right. Yes, I'm very impressed by your Photoshop skills. <laughs> yeah. So he bolt. This is nice. Makes a land drop. Bolts Brian down to 12. We're going to bolt him down to nine, I think, to give this Bloodgast haste. Yeah, that's a good sequence, and that's good. about the best Gun's going to have. Now they both have haste. Let's swing, and let's put Brian down to five. Might as well bolt him again, just for good measure. No, don't actually do that. <laughs> yeah, that you one already you can, did it. You guys you, already have haste. You can just cast that in response to a discard spell. So It's an instant. It's not going anywhere. Always thinking about it. No. He has two guys left, a Burning Inquiry and a Lightning Bolt. And currently, BBD is drawing Inquisition of Kozilek. He can't cast that and the bridge with the mana avail available. And the, la the other card besides that is War of Invention. Yeah. So he might just be taking another hit from these Bloodgasts and losing to that third Lightning Bolt. He almost has to Lantern to shuffle himself. If Ben shows him the Lightning Bolt, that informs BBD's decision. He can decision. mill himself with Kodak Shredder. Okay, right, he has the Shredder online. He's going to want to do that, though. Yeah, and it's still not a guarantee how that'll play out. Brian down to six, those three lightning bolts, and now let's put him down to two. Let's make him get that bridge online. Yeah, BBD needs to turn this Inquisition into a land on the top. Yeah, he needs to get bridge and one card. So he will shred himself. Top card, a Lantern of Insight. Does that, that is the that same problem that Inquisition has. Yes, he needs a zero mana card. Right. Land or a zero mana spell is what he needs. And you theoretically, you can bobble your way out of it if you draw this and the next card Ooh, is a yeah. land. I don't want to do that. The thing is, you're, you're already losing if you just draw this spell. So your options are bobble, try to get lucky to find a land, and the fast lands work here because he only has two lands on the battlefield. Okay. Or you can choose to shuffle. If you shuffle, you lose your lantern, and that could be an issue. So upkeep, he'll mill away the lantern. And finds, there All we right. go, Academy Ruins. That's, that plays. Yeah, you see Brian snags that one immediately. All right. Can get down to one card. Plays the land, taps three, puts the Snaring Bridge down, one card in hand. Ben's already used three Lightning Bolts, but Collective Brutality's an out now, too. Mm -hmm. There's the fourth Lightning Bolt and two Brutalities. Draws, collect, draws Burning Inquiry. Hand now two Burning Inquiries. And actually, the two Burning Inquiries are pretty good, Brian, against... Codex Shredder. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> they might be. <laughs> right. They have theoretical value against this yeah. setup. Now, of course, Brian is not too far from just whirring into Witch Bane Orb, and I, and I believe that's a lock. Yes, that, that should end the game. There's no artifact destruction in the main deck here. And this is a missed opportunity, so Ben could have cast a Burning Inquiry here to get rid of that war, but now that Brian's untapping, I don't know that Ben has any more outs. Makes the land drop from... Spire of Industry. Yeah, because he's at two, he has Opal Island Spire. He only needs to use one Spire yeah, to work. Yep. And he has four artifacts on top of that, so he can go to one right. and were for Witchbane Orb. One and two are just the same number. Flashback of Faithless looting from Ben. Might be worth it just to were in response mm -hmm. here. Because if Ben gets a lightning bolt, then that last lightning bolt things get, get awkward. Right, you can't. You can't really whir, because then you just get lightning bolted in response. And here's whir happening. Yeah, so we see three blue and four mana. Yeah, we're going to cast Whir of Invention. This is with Faithless Looting on the stack. He'll get Witchbane Orb. And we believe this is a lock. Brian is at one, mm -hmm. but we, I don't think there's a way that Ben can deal the last point of damage. Right. Creatures aren't going to work. 
Brian can empty his hand of anything at this yeah. point. Burns, Brian has hexproof. Creature, creatures will never attack. This should be good. With the mana setup currently, Brian has a nightmare sequence of draws where he just draws like whir or multiple whirs, and because he can't use the spires for that anymore. Right, those are make colorless. But Ben only has two power creatures, so currently it has to be multiple whirs or whir plus Ben producing yeah. flame blade adept. And you see another codex shredder there too. I guess flame blade adept gives him a chance. Yeah, it's pretty unlikely. Yeah. The odds are extremely small, much less than 1%. Yeah, and Ben picks up cards. He knows it, too. He got Brian down to 1. It was well fought on Ben Reagan's side, but comes up one point short. So Brian denies the game one sweep. Finally a win for the yeah. underdogs. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and we'll see what happens when players go to sideboard. We'll join, talk over the sideboards as we join the match in game two and we come back in a couple minutes. So we are back here. Ben Reagan looking over to the sideboard to see some ways to break up that prison hold of Lantern Control. Now, Ryan, he's got what I think is the best card against Lantern in his board. It's uh, Ancient Grudge. Yes, Ancient Grudge is excellent. There's two copies of that. For other options, three Leyland of the Void, three Thoughtseize, a couple Fatal Push, a couple Grim Lava Monster, a couple Terminate, Engineered Explosives. Obviously, the creature removal is not going to play here. Explosives is pretty nice. There's a lot of ones and zeros in BBD's deck. And there is yeah. a stomping ground in the deck, obviously, the Ancient Grudge. You can get to three to deal with that. Uh, and Steering Bridge as well. Thoughtseize is pretty reasonable in the matchup. There's a small number of things that you need to break up. And I actually don't mind Grim Lava Mancer because it's a creature that can theoretically deal damage under Ensnaring oh, Bridge. Oh, wow. Is like you turn it sideways? Oh, no, you target him. It's yeah, a burn spell. Just shock. I thought you were talking about attacking, and I was like, Ryan, that's ridiculous. It has one power. Yeah. What are the odds that BBD has zero cards? No, but the okay. activated ability, you force BBD to also have a Pithing Needle. On Brian's side, he's got a nice sideboard here. All right, so two Abrupt Decays. Those could hit... Maybe a Flame Blade Adept, which could be very important nah. if he wants them. It's one of the ways he loses to a fast start. You're off. Okay. Yeah, pretty inefficient. Uh, Gearpore Aethergrid can kill Blood Gas. I'm pretty off that. Leyline of Sanctity. There's some burn coming from Ben's side. Probably not enough. Reverse Engineer's a draw three. Doesn't feel like that's what we need. Welding Jar could fight over Ancient Grudge. Just down Nature's Claim can hit a hollow one. Hmm. Padim Council of Innovation. This is a nice one. It gives all his artifacts Shroud to maybe deny Ancient Grudge. Yes. We on any of this yet? Uh, I kind of like Welding Jar, okay. one, one or both. Padim I like a good amount because you're most worried about Ancient Grudge, and that's a really good answer to that. And he also has a Surgical Extraction yeah. hanging out. That, well, that's just great. That can be pretty powerful in this matchup. Yeah, Surgical Extraction, uh, Pithing Needle's not going to do much. Do you like anything like Wear Terror, Nature's Claim, to kill a Hollow One, or is that far too... Cute. You can get bridge online. Sometimes turn through. Sometimes turn two. Frequently turn three. And hollow one is just so bad against ensnaring bridge. And okay. be because that removal spell just doesn't hit any other creature in the deck, I think it's way too narrow for a deck like this that is so focused. So it's like you're mostly on Brian's side, just gonna sleeve up the game one deck again. Yeah, this is just a pretty good matchup for the deck, honestly. Yeah, it's a combo deck that's based around creatures attacking, and that's yes. just fine. Right. There is some some negative, some difficulty though I would think because Brian tries to, his deck tries to deny outs by milling his opponent, and you can't really do that against Hollow. One. Brian's gonna get thought seized as we start game number two. From Brian's side, we see Welding Jar, Welding Jar, no, just one jar. Per correction, Welding Jar, Mox Opal, two lands. They're both Glimmer Voids. Two discard spells in Inquisition of Kozlek, and it looks like that Witchbane Orb. Pixis is that of Pixis Pandemonium. of Pandemonium? It's one of the two. All I right. do believe. And Bren, Ben's going to take the Welding Jar. Sure. Possibly already has access to explosives or something like that. Brian draws Pithing Needle. Yeah, normally you'd take Mox Opal there. But I guess we see turn one Opal Pixis from Brian. And Pixis is actually one of the better cards for yeah. Brian because it exiles Ancient Grudge if you catch it on top of the library. Yeah. And Ben's hand has who knows what. He's got three Goblin Lores in it. We can start with the Faithless Looting. Another reason that I like Surgical Extraction for BBD, it's not just the creatures in the early game. It's also really nice if you can get a spot where Ben just has an Ancient Grudge in his graveyard and no way to flash it back if you catch him tapped low or something like that. And you just get the Ancient Grudges, you don't even have to worry anymore. All right, here's a dangerous situation for Brian. So that turn, Ben casts Faithless Looting, discards Bloodgast, puts a land into play, gets Bloodgast out of the graveyard, make uses the land to cast Flame Blade Adept and says go, and he's got a handful of Goblin Lores. That Adept could be very dangerous. Mm -hmm. And BBD's draw step's not really cooperating. I believe the last two turns he picked up Pithing Needles. 
Yeah, he's in the cast in Christian of Kozilek. Now, the bad news on Brian's side is that it's three goblin lores. Well, all right. Take goblin lore. <laughs> but that's... That hardly matters. This is just Raven's crime. It's... Right. Doesn't... It's not going to affect anything. Brian's in for a bunch of damage this next turn. So kind of decision time for Brian. Does he want to set a pithing needle to something here? What would you set it to? I mean, he's got two pithing needles in, so I assume he's looking to needle some stuff. But... Right. You do generally expect Grim Lava Man's out of these decks. Okay. That's a reasonable card to just name, even though you haven't seen one just yet. Um, you, can, you can name Engineered Explosives? Yeah, he's boarded them in, so I assume he has something in mind. He names Street Wraith. That's a reasonable one in the dark. Yeah. The deck does play for Street Wraith. If Ben just has those in hand, he's a long way from casting them. He's got another Pithing Needle. What? Yeah, what else is there even to name, Brian? He's emptying his hand, I assume, so that if he top decks Ensnaring Bridge, he can just go, go to town? Right. Also set up so he has enough artifacts to whir for Bridge. And Grim Lava Mansour is the other name, so... Props on Brian naming two cards that that are are there. <laughs> That's hard to do on this board. Right, yeah, yeah. In the post cyborg configuration, I hope that we're naming relevant cards with Pithing yeah. Needle. And here is Goblin Lore from Ben. Yeah, as one would expect. The card we knew about going into this was a second Goblin Lore. And three lands discarded. Oh, the other Goblin Lore is still left in Ben's hand. This is a bunch of damage as this is going to pump the Flame Blade Adept. Yes, plus three. And a crash in here. Plus one, plus oh, every time you cycle or discard a card. And that checks per card. Inquisition again from Brian. We see Burning Inquiry, Bloodgast, Goblin Lore. We'll take the Goblin Lore. And he'll take the Burning Inquiry. Fair enough. Easy. Though so Brian has to find an Estering Bridge. Three mana. Flashback of Faithless Looting for Ben. Draws two. Going to discard two. That'll pump Flame Blade Adept twice. That's five more damage coming in. And he gets that Bloodgast into the graveyard. <laughs> and, and gets to uh, discard a Street Wraith. discard Street Wraith. It's because it's Bithing Needled. <laughs> Brian is down to nine, which means that Bloodgast will have haste as Brian makes Mishra's bauble. Mm -hmm. Things are definitely going Ben's way so far. Now, Ryan, Brian has been declining on just act. Is there a reason he'd want to or not want to just activate Pixis here for nothing? So the odds that you hit Ancient Grunds or Grudge is pretty slim. You don't have any information on the top of libraries. Because it exiles them face down, too. So you, right. just, you literally know nothing. Yeah. You're, you're trying to hit very specific things. It's kind of the issue is if you had access to seven mana, you'd want to be trying to get a bridge under this because then you can activate the secret mode on Pixis of Pandemonium yeah, yeah. to put your bridge in on the battlefield. But the difference that it makes is just random and just so small, just activating randomly here. You almost never see Pixis get activated for seven. It's a lot of mana. From Ben's side, Burning Inquiry. It's going to mill Brian for three. Ben will need three more pumps on that Flame Blade Adept. That means the, the Blood Gas is two. The Adept is going up to four. So six damage. The Blood Gas of the Yard is eight. It's possible that Ben can get up, find a ninth point of damage and just... Off one get card, it's either Blood Gas or something different. If it's yeah. another Goblin Lore or Burning Inquiry... Well, there's two blood gas in the yard. If that last card in Ben's hand is a land, he's gonna. It's lethal. Looks like it isn't. He just swings in for six. Yeah, he has discarded several lands to these random discards. Yeah, and then makes another flame blade adapt. All right, Brian, one draw here. Graft Digger's Cage. He'll go ahead and use Mishra's Bobble. Yeah, a whir was milled over as well, so that's one fewer bridge. Yep. Brian has two draw steps here. Whir was picked up, and Padim. He's got. He's got chances. Too much mana stuff. The Flame Blade Adept's attack for one with Menace. I guess that's he not goes lethal. To one. Well, if, and Street Wraith is, is needled, so he can't attack and then cycle. Yeah. The question is, what are we doing next turn? I like that we, we Brian draw, just held we, onto the word. Maybe Reagan casts some kind of discard effect. We draw a land, and then we cast the Padim. That, that's what you got? I mean, it's, there's yeah. nothing else that can happen. It's the only way you're in the game. 
Ben says, go to attacks. Brian taps everything. Here is Whir of Invention. For ensnaring bridge. One card in hand. So the one, the, the adepts can attack. They can attack Brian down to one. Yep. With, with menace. Now that that matters, there's no creatures to block. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the demon hand, if that was the play of this turn, but obviously BBD didn't have the mana for that. There's going to be some problems if BBD draws the land because Bedeem forces Brian to draw extra cards. <laughs> yeah, he'll have to dump them as fast <laughs> as he draws them. I think he's up to the challenge, but it is pretty... I mean, he doesn't have any margin of error. He's at one. Yeah. Three mana, Ben. I think he thought he had a Faithless Looting, but those are gone. Yeah, we've been through a lot of that stuff already. Players yeah, Graveyard PM pretty much just junk at this point. Looks like he's uh, doing a, some delving. Okay, sure, delving seems great. Over on our standard table, Brad Nelson takes game two, evens things up in the Grixis Mirror. Tassiger, the play from Ben. Ooh, and he delved five. That's a bingo square for me. So, you know, forget about that. He didn't have to delve five, but I appreciate him doing it. You're checking off something? Delve five. I got a bunch this round. You're in trouble. Yeah, probably. None of this. Two weeks ago, checked off 19 squares without a bingo. That's just <laughs> hard to do. Yeah. It was pretty great. You won on like 11. Or something stupid. Match result in in Legacy. It is Rio Trevath in a clean 2-0 win over Todd Anderson. That's the first match for their team. Swing in. Surgical Extraction using black mana from Brian. Brian taking the opportunity to look at Reagan's post-cyborg configuration because he is losing this game. Right. He didn't draw the land, can't cast the Padim. So better inform things okay. like those needles right. for game three. This is savvy from Brian. Taking taking notes. Okay, two ancient grudges, check. Yep. And then he's gonna lose. <laughs> no, strong play from Brian. Yep, sees the explosives. That one's going to be good to know about. Okay, the one of explosives. Yeah, he can that's really good, especially when he has these pithing needles. Yep. You might have seen one of their name explosives. You never really can know what kind of deck will board an engineered explosives. It's available to basically everyone. Right, yeah. And one one and zero are both really good against okay. his deck, though three is certainly the number. This deck can do that as well. Well, game two goes to Ben Reagan. It's two Flame Blade Adepts sneak across Ensnaring Bridge twice to deal the lethal points of damage. Ben got him down to one and lost game one. Did not get stuck on one life, though it looked like it could have happened for game two. It's Flame Blade Adept, not Flame Blade Inept. All right. Ooh, ooh. All right, well, we'll see what those flame blades are up to. Game number three. We'll be back in just a minute.
a pair of game threes here about to come up. The team of Anderson, Bronduin, and Nelson losing in Legacy. So they're going to need both of these game threes. We've been watching the modern one. Brian stabilized on one life game one, was not able to stabilize on one life game two. He did make a savvy play here, Ryan, where he ended the game by surgically extracting Ben's deck before conceding. Got to see the whole sideboard configuration. Mm -hmm. Does that change any of his decisions? It informs kind of how heavy he wants to be on these welding jars, Padims, you know, how many grudges are available. It also informs how he wants to navigate with these pithing needles. In game two, we saw him cast Needle on the Street Wraith, whereas knowing about engine explosives, he likely would have named yeah. explosives instead. Both players keeping on seven. Here we go. Mishra's Bauble, Glimmer Void, Pixis a Pandemonium. Brian's setting up. A Hollow One Nimden's opener. Looks like two Hollow Ones. We might see some fireworks here. We can see anywhere between zero and four entering the battlefield. All right. How good of a start can Ben Reagan put together? The ideal way to do it is cycle Street Wraith, cast Faithless Looting. Because then there's no variance in it. Because you always get what you want. The fun way to do it. Burning Inquiry, draw more of them, discard everything else. Yeah, that's, discard that's all the, hollow ones. the dream. And for Brian Brown, do All right, all nightmare. right, here we go. Burning Inquiry. All right, I'm so into this. Any more hollow ones? He's got two hollow ones in his hand. He really hopes to not discard either of them. Either or both. Either. <laughs> Frankly, getting this could, one. This could be great. Getting Let's one on the it. battlefield is more than he deserves casting a spell like this. Brian loses some things. Importantly, he loses a ensnaring bridge. Yes. How many Hollow Ones will the Inquiry eat? Let's see. This is a one. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. It loses a Flame Wake Phoenix too. That's a wash. Yeah. Was it one of the two or was it a new one? It, uh, how many Hollow Ones are left? Looks like just one just left one. over. Okay. That's plenty though. That's a really good turn one. When you have two Hollow Ones in your opener, you're probably not getting completely wrecked. Yes. Things ben are usually fine. Gets one free 4-4. Four, four. Brian going to go ahead and get rid of that bobble. Wants an extra card. You saw there a welding jar was discarded for Brian. Got to figure that yeah. one was picked up off the inquiry. Yeah, well, the, the big one was ensnaring bridge getting discarded for Brian. That yes. was likely why he kept the hand. He's picked up War of Invention this turn, so he has a path to ensnaring bridge, but he's now farther off. Mm -hmm. I believe he picked up a Mox Opal as well, though. That's going to help yeah, him. Yeah, always in to draw that one. Here's in Ancient Stirrings. Top card shows another Mox Opal and four lands. That's kind of a gross setup, actually. You'd like to just find one of your other zeros or even a one-mana artifact. Yeah, you might take the Mox Opal because at least you can dump it from your hand faster. And that's, right. that's gross, but is a thing. It's not pretty. He's also still missing the Lantern. I don't know if there's one in hand, but... Okay, he takes Dark Slick Shores. Sure. Sure, it's a good land I for mean, the deck. Those, those cards are all just the same. Yeah. <laughs> you have to pick one of them. So Dark Slick Shores, Pithing Needle. See what he names. Now, remember, he has information on Ben's deck, so this is going to be a wiser needle than it was last game. This one, I would assume, is Explosives. And, yep, now he names Engineered Explosives. Good playing there on ben, Brian's side. Yeah, you generally see good play from World Champions. It's a thing. <laughs> Back over to Ben. He's going to have four damage off the hollow and looks to add more. We have Flame Wake Phoenix already. And his turn looks to be just straightforward. A Delved Tassiger. Ooh, this is a lot of damage. Yeah, the Phoenix left over as well. Yep, six swings in. Brian down to 14. He already has 10 on the board for the next turn. Most of these creatures are shut off by even a very feeble and staring bridge, though. Yeah, and you were mentioning this earlier. You said if Brian gets down an ensnaring bridge, it's good enough, and it doesn't really matter whether his hand is empty. Yes. And uh, Misha's Bobble picked up. That's really nice at getting you under four. Mm -hmm. Well, he has two zeros, and with a land drop and that War of Invention, he's there. But he just has a Snaring Bridge in his hand, casts it. Yeah. One card left, and it's War. This is this is good for Brian. Right. Now War is just whatever additional piece he wants. He, he is still missing that Lantern. If you right. get to maintain the bridge, I assume you're just going to find a Lantern on the following turn. Yeah, that makes sense because right now he doesn't. He, he has the lock, but he doesn't have any controls. Right. And he's using the bobble here. I like that a lot. He gets to see what the top card is. Chooses to mill it away, in fact. Exile it. Maybe an Ancient Grudge. We'll see. Mm-hmm. And Something he inform, didn't want. Yeah, that helps inform what to do with the were as well. And if that was an Ancient Grudge, that's one of two copies in Regan's deck. Yeah, and it's a Pixis also, not, yeah, you know, not a Shredder. That's gone. 
So Brian, Ben just passes. And there's the bobble trigger. Brian picks up an extra card. Found land and Codex Shredder. So he can deploy Codex Shredder and Werfer Lantern right now. Here's Codex Shredder. And given that BBD yeah. was not attacked yeah. last turn, it just makes sense to go find the Lantern, unless he's getting extremely leveled. It'd be pretty surprising to see a different play here. Looks like Brian actually passed. Doesn't hurt you too much to give Ben one draw step, in fairness, especially because the war can just find bridge if that's what happens. See. Yep, war for one. Looks like Brian is going for that lantern. Look, the lock is getting assembled here. And we saw game one, Ben was not particularly able to break out of it. And right now, Brian's at 14 instead of one. So it's in those burn spells that were outs in the past aren't at this point. Yes, especially with Brian have access to multiple mill rocks al already. Codex Shredder and Pixis of Pandemonium already on the battlefield. Ben's trying to draw basically all of his burn spells, but he just he won't be able to. There's just too much disrupting that. Right. The first three lightning bolts, BB yeah. doesn't even have to care about. He's not even going to disrupt that. Basically, just looking at Ancient Grudge or Explosives from here. This this one's pretty much locked up for BBD. Yeah, so we're going to go over to our standard match where the Grixis Energy players are playing. It looks like it may come down to this. If there's a turn in the modern match, we'll come back to it. But we kind of know how Lantern goes. This story is, is all but done. Yeah, we've seen that one before. So, Nico and Brad Nelson here. We see, it looks like some post-cyber. Oh, is that Argul's Bloodfast? It is. So Brad making a copy of the Scarab God with a Bloodfast in play. For Ben, it is just a Thopter. Light Souls, though, Brad, Brad hit down to nine, it looks like, from this Thopter. Mm. And this is the last card in hand for Nico. Yeah. Sleeve Siphoner. Yep, gets an energy. You see teammate there, Rio Trevathan, helping him out on this one as well. That they, they know this one matters. The thing about just having the Thopper token, sure, it flies, but the Scarab God's going to produce a large world. There's some in the graveyards here, and that's going to get a Thopter to block that. And you have to think, despite the fact that Lytos are low on Brad's side, it's probably because he did it to himself. Yeah. That blood fast, you know, this isn't, it's, this is where he wants to be. You'll notice that one player has several cards in hand, and the other has zero. Yeah. I mean, it's a very powerful card here for this matchup. Yep. Drawing extra cards, always great. I don't know how often you're looking to transform it in this matchup. As I just want extra cards, yeah. Exactly. It's mostly just a uh, copy of Greed. Well, I suppose when you have Scarab God going, which Brad does, I wouldn't mind having it transformed just in case my opponent drew Vraska's Contempt. I'd like to make sure Scarab God never goes to exile. Sure. The issue is you lose access to the drawing cards. Oh, you have Scarab God. But yeah, I mean, it's yeah. like, it's like Scarab God's probably things. winning the game. Yeah. Yeah. So Bloodfast, you see there, two mana, two life to draw a card. It's very slow, but in this kind of attrition matchup, slow is fine. Yes. And Scarab God starts to attack on Brad's side. Looks like his first points of damage, Nico down to 15. Nico did pick up Field of Ruin, which might stop any plans Brad had on flipping that enchantment. Yeah, not really an issue for Nelson, though. Currently, you're still definitely able to just draw a few extra cards. These control decks not really known for their reach. Certainly not through a Scarab God that's just going to be able to bring back World of Virtuosos. Untapping with a Scarab God's pretty good, I've heard. And now we see Gear Hulk, Torrential Gear Hulk from Brad, will cast the Vraska's Contempt out of the graveyard, gets Brad more life points, makes Siphoner. These are just all extra cards that he's converting. Mm -hmm. And this one is the decider. As we mentioned before, it is now official. Brian Brown doing 2-1 to one, wins the modern match over Ben Reagan. And You're going now, back to yeah. Brad. Looking at the Scarab God upkeep trigger, possibly bringing some stuff back in response can find Whirler Virtues, because it looks like he's grabbing Whirler Virtuoso. Yep, and Scarab God closes out pretty quickly, and I think that's what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Some energy here from the Virtuoso. Scrying on the top, draining. And Brad and this should do it, yeah. He really just doesn't need any other cards. I mean, it just comes to us, right? He, he cast a Scarab God, and it didn't get exiled. 
Yes. And we're in a mid-range matchup. And when you untap with a bunch of lands and a Scarab God, that's the game. Graveyard's pretty well stocked as well. Multiple Virtuosos, some Glinsleeve Siphoners. Any creature is just reasonable if you bring it back as a 4-4, but the extra energy, the drawing cards, the making thopters, that stuff's all just excellent upside. And Harness Lightning on the blocker, and Nico extends the hand. So a early lead for the MTG Access team. They get the first four games, but they needed a fifth one, and they couldn't do it. It was a rally from the Roanoke guys, and they are 3-0. Yeah, you know, the scrappy underdogs of Todd Anderson, Brian Brown doing, and Bradley Nelson were able to pull off a, an upset there. Yeah, I mean, the, getting the first four games against them is really impressive against such a team, but you know that if you play long enough, those guys are going to get their wins, and that's what happened. They're not going to leave much of anything on the table. All right. So they moved to 3-0, and MTG Access to 2-1, and both still doing very well. Now, speaking of getting their wins, Ryan, I'm going for this. All right, all right. Player cycled a card. Player played an unstable basic land. Yep. Um, spell cast with flashback. Math is great. There we go. Yep. You're, you're, <laughs> you're basically done. I I'm got you this time. Pretty much dead on board. Oh, five or more artifacts or enchantments. Hold on. It's easy. Yeah. yeah. You're never going to get a Jace the Mind Sculptor ultimate, though. I don't know why those car those squares even exist on my card. <laughs> Whatever. Um, we have outs. They all involve modern. But we're gonna we'll watch some more modern, then. Let's get some all modern right. magic. <laughs> I got a lot of modern squares, too. All right. That's it for round three. When we come back, he'll have round number four. We'll see the other teams who are at 3-0. and